Hello everyone, hope all is well today. My name is Gilles Lamotte. Today we will discuss the association between two categorical variables. Um, here on display we see a table. This is 386 female subjects which were cross-classified according to their cholesterol level and their age. Um, we were going to consider both of these variables as categorical. Uh, the categories for cholesterol is low, medium, high and the categories for age is young and old. Um, we will analyze the association between the two variables by using Pearson's chi-squared test for independence. So I'll show you how to do this with R. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste the six numbers and the six cells in our table. And I'll put these in an R editor window just to show you what we can do. And then to construct a table, we'll, we'll uh, assign these values to an object, which will actually be a matrix object that I'll, I will call my table. I will take the six numbers and put them in a vector. So by using the function C, which is combining the values, we are constructing a numerical vector. And so in this numerical vector we have our, our six values from the table. Now notice that this is done row wise. So 55, 110, and 90 is actually our first row and then followed by the numbers in the second row. So to tell R that this is actually done row wise we need an argument called by row and this is equal to true. And we also need to indicate to R that we have a certain number of columns in the table. So here n call, this is number of columns, is equal to 3. So I will select my command and then I will press on Control R or Command Enter if you're on a Mac. I'm using Windows so it's Control R. And then as I go to my console, I will see that my command has been submitted and then I can display my table. And then so here we have the contingency table, uh, however we see it's not nice, we don't have any names for our columns, names for our rows. And so by using the functions call names and row names, we can uh, uh, define names for the columns and the variables. So if we go back to our Excel sheet, here we see that cholesterol, this its levels are actually defining the columns, and age is the rows. Okay, so if we go back to our our editor window, the call names should be the names of our levels for the cholesterol. So this will be low, medium, and high. So here we have a vector, um, a categorical vector, which has some uh, characters. So it's low, medium, and high. And then for the row names of my table, I'll use young and old. Okay, so I'll submit these. And then we go back to the console. And then if I display my table, I have a nicer contingency table. Okay, So now we are ready to put my table, which is my matrix object, into the function called uh, chi-squared, so c-h-i-s-q dot test. So this is to do the chi-squared test. Um, you can do it without the argument correct equal to false or with the argument correct equal to false. Um, essentially by default R is going to use a continuity correction. Um, if you put correct equal to false the continuity correction will not be used. Uh, in our class we're actually teaching it without continuity correction. Okay? Um, so I will submit both commands and then we'll see actually that it's similar in both cases. And so here the p-value in both cases is exactly the same and so is the degrees of freedom and, and the the uh, observed value of the test statistic. And so the, the chi-squared test statistic is just under 15, degrees of freedom is 2, and the p-value is extremely small. And so our um, evidence against the null hypothesis of no association is uh, significant in favor of an alternative where there is an association between the two variables. Okay, And so once we identify that there is an association between the two, we should actually try to describe it. Uh, this could be done with a bar plot, um, which I'll discuss in, in another video. Okay, So that's it for constituent tables and, and using Pearson's chi-squared test with R. Have a good night.